to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I came up with three things that I believe represent the frustration that is in the church, the frustrations of believers. I have been able to categorize them into three and I want to talk a bit about them tonight. And then we will really find out what the issue is and why these prevalent frustrations. Hallelujah. I know that many of us have committed ourselves to love God. We've committed ourselves to be diligent and we thank God for making us part of those who will enforce this intensity of the kingdom into the hearts of men. Um, so I've looked at these things. I thought about them very seriously through the week. And I found out that um, it's not because believers do not love God. It's not because we don't want to serve him. But it looks like in the course of our journey there are certain things that we encounter and these things have frustrated the christian experience of many number one i call it the frustration of unanswered prayer the frustration of unanswered prayers There is no time in church history where you have people pray more than our time and our generation. There are ministries that conduct night vigil every week. Is that true? There are people who, there are ministries that have prayer chains running through the year. Prayer chains of six hours, eight hours. There are ministries that have paid and employed prayer warriors men and women who believe that they have been called into the intercessory ministry hallelujah so the problem is not that we don't pray the problem is that it seems to me that a majority of our prayers go unanswered is that true and this is again one of the reasons why most of the prayer meetings of many churches are not a well attended to you don't find a lot of people you can find a church with a membership strength of 5,000 and see only 600 people come for prayer meeting is that true because hidden in us is this this pain this contemplation that we have that the degree of spiritual energy we're dissipating in the place of prayer is not commensurate to the result that we're getting is that true and i know that many of us have asked these questions some of us have put ourselves on prayer and fasting programs some of us fast every week some of us fast many times in a week hallelujah there are ministries that begin prayer and fasting programs every year seven days 21 days and for months and there are people who have even taken fast for a whole year the highest i've seen in my life is a gentleman who fasted for 400 days 400 days six to six i rounded up the 400th day with him you would imagine that at the end of 400 days all his prayers past present and future should have been answered so what is the frustration why is it that in our christian experience we do not find that our prayers are answered yet the bible tells us something interesting let's turn to matthew 21 verse 22 oh i love the holy spirit i love the holy spirit 
empty when the holy spirit is permitted listen let me digress a bit something just touched my heart i'm really talking about the ministry of the holy spirit tonight but i just want to start on this note did you know that the holy spirit is crippled and bound in many churches and many of our christian circles the ministry of the holy spirit has been so limited there is so much the holy ghost wants to do in the church there is so much the holy ghost wants to do in the life of the believer but in many circles his ministry is limited and for other pentecostal circles that have been a bit open the limitation they have given the holy spirit is just praying in tongues and that does it but there is so much there is so much that the holy spirit can do hallelujah we look to yahweh yahweh forever yahweh Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh, sing it one more time, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, Forever Yahweh. Yahweh. Matthew 21. It says, And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. What's the condition? Believing ye shall receive. This is the Bible. This is the word of God that is infallible. It says, What things soever ye shall ask in prayer. If you ask it believing, he said, ye shall receive. Hallelujah. And yet, the truth is that we pray and according to what we know believing to be, we really believe. Is that true? But then we do not find it happen. So why is that so? The frustration of unanswered prayers. Can I tell you the truth? Many people in the body of Christ are already used to their prayers not being answered. I hope you know that. We just pray it because it keeps us spiritual. But the truth is, the average believer today does not even expect his prayer to be answered. Hallelujah. When we pray and the result comes, we are so shocked. And we say, Lord, I thank you. I know it's not my prayer. Have you heard people speak like that? Yet they prayed and they said, Lord, we trust your visitation. The frustration of unanswered prayer. When we lay hands on the sick and we pray. Or when we pray about certain things. We say in the name of Jesus and everybody say amen. And immediately after that prayer. People go and do something that they have already said God should do. For instance. When you say oh Lord we are trusting you. That um, you will do a miracle in this family. In the name of Jesus, we are trusting you that by six in the morning, there should be a miracle. We believe this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Three hours later, everybody is sweating around the house, finding solutions. And once it's evening, people say, look, let's, let's push this thing. They are making all the calls and doing everything we can do. Yet, what was the content of our prayer? Oh God, intervene. And we said, we believe, we know that you will do this. And when we said in Jesus' name, everybody shouted, Amen. In other words, let it be so. So there is a lot of frustration. Can I tell you something? Nobody wants to waste his time investing in anything that does not work. Are you getting my point? The reason why many of, you know, and we teach in church, we teach people, pray, pray, pray. Become prayerful. Become prayerful. Let me tell you the truth. Our concentration should not be to teach the people how to pray. It should teach them the principles of making the prayer work. If prayer really works, you will not need to tell anybody, pray. Is that true? Number two. Hmm. 
the second frustration that I've seen in the body of Christ is what I call the seeming powerlessness of the word of God in the face of real life situations. Please take note of my, my choice of words. Don't write what I did not say. The seeming powerlessness of the word of God in the face of real life situations. In the face of sickness, in the face of failure, in the face of evil, in the face of terrorism. Hallelujah. It's easy to believe and say, I believe your word, your word works. You know, it has become a slogan in the body of Christ. The word of God works and people say, yeah, the word works. But the truth is, is it really working in our lives? Hallelujah. When we stand face to face with sickness, when we stand face to face with failure, when we stand face to face with evil, when we stand face to face with witchcraft and all the things that tie the destinies of men now, for many of us, our testimony has been that the word did not work. In quote, in the face of that. Is that true? We brought the word of God. We spoke the word of God. We believed the word of God. Many of us, maybe we found ourselves sick and we confessed by his stripes I am healed. The truth is you would have died if you did not run to the chemist. Is that true? You spoke the word. You even probably listened to one koinonia message and obeyed everything as taught to the latter. Yet it seemed not to work. The second frustration I've seen in the body of God. One is the tragedy, the frustration of unanswered prayer. Number two is the seeming powerlessness of the word of God. I know people, I know churches that unfortunately were victims of bomb blast and all of that. And the church that blew up had scriptures written on their walls. Is that true? Answer me, is that true? Yet, these kinds of things happen. Many cars that have stickers, all sufficient God, and you see the kind of ghastly motor accident. One tire there, the other side there, half of the car and all the people died. Yet, the, a scripture, is that true? Was pasted there. So, there are many unanswered questions. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If you want to contend for the glory of God, you must not allow anybody to pretend that those questions are answered in your life when they are not answered. The secret, listen to me, the secret to authentic Christianity is to keep asking those questions until you find an answer. I'm a very inquisitive person and I don't take yes sir for an answer. Praise God. Many of us believe a lot of things that we do not understand and we just receive all kinds of junks that cannot be proven. And in the face of real life situations, they do not work. A sister speaks and says, in the name of Jesus, the Bible says, male and female, he created them. You began to speak that word at 23. Now you are 37. And no man has come. Yet, 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 you've been speaking that word. Truly, genuinely. I know people who their phones are full of scripture. There are ringtone scripture, text tone scripture, alarm tones scripture. They sleep with Bible, audio Bible. They wake up with audio Bible in their car, at work, their laptops. Everything is the word of God. Yet there is nothing changing in their lives. And these people are asking questions that we, the men of God, are ashamed or afraid of confronting. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? Hallelujah. There are many homes that have been raised by armed robbers. And while they were shooting people at the point of death, the people were saying, I shall not die, yet they died. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Tonight, I'm, I'm here to provoke. Maybe it's just me that thinks about these things. Does it happen to you? The reason is because we have created a protocol in ministry that shuts your mouth. Is that true? So when you want to ask us, they say, keep quiet. You go and meet an average pastor with this question. 
and they will tell you it's because you are a baby Christian. Is that true? I, I tell you the truth, that is not an accurate answer. We are going to explore the word tonight. There must be an answer. Everybody say there must be an answer. Otherwise, what do we have to tell the world? Listen, if we cannot answer this question, why should I not go to a herbalist? Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Why should I not go to the person that we used to worship? At least we worship that shrine and had 12 children. Now I'm coming to worship the only true God and that word does not work. Yet, we stand on stage as men of God and we tell people do not worship idols. And believers are confused. I cannot understand. You go to a native doctor's place. He will never ask you, do you believe in me? He will never ask you, do you agree? He will say, sit down. And you will watch the shock of your life. That man will manipulate spiritual laws to your confusion. You will bring a goat and it will disappear in your presence. And you say, the gods have eaten it. He said, go. And you will live with, with a, a level of confidence. You know that that political position is already your own. Because you saw the goat disappear. You, di you didn't need to believe the man. You didn't need to do anything. But when we come to the church, we believe. We claim that the word of God created the heavens and the earth. We claim that he upholds all things by the word of his power. Is that true? We claim that we have been born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. Yet the truth is, for many people in the body of Christ, our results are either so little or there is nothing at all. We sing all kinds of powerful songs. There is power in the name of Jesus. The truth is, it's just that the song has a lot of melody. Many of us have not seen the reality of that song in our lives. We sing it because it's one of those nice, well-composed songs. And we, we hope that by continually singing it, one day we'll see something in our lives. There are, there are many of us that have not really seen the manifestation of the word of God working in the things we call the working of the word of God, there are people who are not Christians who are getting the same result. It's not really very unique. Is that true? Number three, the third frustration that I've seen in our Christian experience, this is probably the greatest of them all. The inability to make the power of God manifest to solve human problems. The inability, the inability to make the power of God that the Bible tells us has been made accessible to us, that preachers tell us have been made accessible to us, the inability to bring that power to the scene in the face of real trouble, in the face of real danger, is someone getting blessed tonight? The inability to make the power of God manifest to solve human problems. We have been told that we have unlimited power in Christ. Is that true? The average church has taught the believer that you are powerful. You are not ordinary. You are born of a victorious life. Luke 10, 19, he said, Behold, I give you authority. I give you power. We have been taught but when it comes to bringing that power, to making it manifest, to solve the problems and the predicaments of life, we are like the prophets of Baal. Many of us have called from morning till night and nothing has happened. Is that true? Oh, but look at your, your Bible. The Bible says Elijah was so confident about the working of this power he was mocking the prophets of Baal if I'm the one I will be in a state of holiness so that I, I don't say anything that will stop the power from working Elijah was so confident he was mocking the people he said maybe Baal is sleeping call him more this is a man that was so confident and when it was evening he said alright let me show you people something When the king was afraid, when Naaman came and met him, the prophet said, let him come and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. 
there is certainly something wrong with our Christianity. And if we do not confront it, life will force us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Life will force us and place us in a position that we will have to prove whether we are authentic or fake. Be careful when you call a man fake. Verify whether he's working in your own life first. These three things have frustrated many believers. Our prayers don't seem to be answered. And even when it is answered, it looks like it is luck. Because it looks like we can't reproduce it. Ah, praise God. My prayer request at the miracle service was answered. Praise the Lord. So you don't know whether the headache really went because you dropped the prayer request. Or it just went because you are eating well and the body healed itself. Is that true? There must be some level of authentic result that can stamp. You know that this one came as a result of the answer. Help us, Holy Spirit. There is something we are missing in the church. I'm obsessed about studying the ancient church. And let me tell you something. We are not close. We are not close to what the book of Acts, you know, um, it fueled up my curiosity again because the school of ministry students were studying with were, were studying Acts, the book of Acts, all through this week. And um, as I read through, some of the students are just remembering. I know you didn't read anything. Praise God. If you can answer these questions. Listen, whoever can answer this question will rule in this earth today, here and now. These are the questions that the governments of nations have not been able to answer. Preachers have answered a little of these questions to an extent. Very little. And we have esteemed them so high. But I pray that God will open our eyes. There has to be a way. The Bible said there is a part. Although no fowl has seen it, it is there. There is a part. He said, and the whelps of the lion. Can we be so sure that we come, when we come to the house of God, solutions will be provided, guaranteed? Can we be that sure? Praise the Lord. So what is the problem? What is the problem? What is the missing link? What are we missing? How many of you believe that God is almighty? Let me see your hands. How many of you believe that these issues that I've talked about, the problem is not from God? Is that true? That means we must search. We must search. We must search. Oh God, open our eyes. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise. I will see of the wonders of your word. I will see out for joy. I will see of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Hallelujah. I've studied this thing carefully and I've come up with two solutions that I want us to consider based on the word of God. I truly believe with all my heart that the solution to these problems and these frustrations lie in two things. And that if we solve these things, then we will see levels of the glory that we have never seen. Number 
Number one, I believe that the missing link is that we lack the faith to back up our prayers, to back up our words, and to back up our steps or actions to release the power of God. I believe that the first problem is a faith problem. I am absolutely convinced that the first problem, the reason why we have unanswered prayers, the reason why the word of God seems to be powerless, the reason why we are unable to bring the power of God here and now to solve problems. At best, we have, we have done well in getting the power of God in a meeting to throw people down and they fall down and stand up and then here and there there are a few wheelchairs and a few blind eyes and a few deaf ears and a few cancers a few hiv very little in a meeting with over hundred thousand people if only 20 people are healed that's a shame for that meeting hallelujah is that true is god challenging us tonight we're tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this we're tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this there's gotta be more gotta be more there's gotta be more than this there's gotta be more gotta be more there's gotta be more than this for desperate people do desperate things and we press in need there's gotta be more gotta be more there's gotta be more than this there's gotta be more there's gotta be more hallelujah let me tell you something Please, I want you to agree with me tonight. What we have been taught as faith, what many people have moved around with as faith is not faith because it's not producing what the Bible says faith will produce. See, we must humble ourselves and admit that there's something we are not getting well. It doesn't mean we are not born again. Are you getting my point? This is the school of the spirit. We must come to a point where we accept that there are a lot of dots in our Christian experience. And if we will cry enough, we will find answers to it. I made up my mind that I will serve my generation with authentic Christianity. Hallelujah. No man will fool me and deceive me into just believing. You know, we, we find all kinds of theological explanations and we circle away the dots and we just say, you just keep trusting God. No. 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 The Bible says through desire, Proverbs 18 verse 1. A man through desire. When there are unanswered questions and you refuse and say, I don't care who the man of God is. If the answer, listen, I may not know what the answer is, but I know when it is the right answer. Hallelujah. That's what will draw us through desire. A man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom so there is a faith problem and we're going to discuss that very seriously there is a real faith problem why is there a faith problem because we have been taught listen that faith comes when you receive or hear the word of god which is true but the question is Many of us do not settle down and find out what the servant of God was saying. Because when he said faith comes by hearing, they did not have this. I hope you know. So what was their word of God? They didn't say faith comes by opening a book. They didn't have this. King James was not there. Is that true? They were not even permitted to have all of this. In, they only had the books of the prophets, the Pentateuch, 
And all of this, you will see it in Luke chapter 4. Jesus would come and they would bring it out. He would read it and they will close it back and go and keep it. Yet, they said, faith comes when you hear. Let me tell you something. True faith, Bible faith, faith that really moves mountains is a product of an encounter. It's a product of an encounter. It's not a product of confession and jacking yourself into some psychosis or metaphysics. Faith, Bible faith that moved mountains and will move any mountain is a derivative of a real genuine encounter that prints a reality in your spirit that supersedes any experience, supersedes any pressure. This is the factor that we are lacking in the church. I truly am convinced that this is one of the reasons why we are not seeing the power of God. The psalmist said, Oh Lord, you are my God. He said, Early will I seek you. My soul longs after you. He said, To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. I want to see what I saw in the church in my life. Why must it always happen? And only happen here at Koinonia. It can happen in my life. I can carry it like an atmosphere. Faith. That is a product of a real encounter. Listen. Did you know. That all two scriptures. Men who had faith. Did not know that the name of what they had was called faith. I hope you know. What did they call it? They didn't even know what it was. The patriarchs. Many of we call Abraham the father of faith. How many times did Abraham mention the word F A I T in the Bible? Any man that has an encounter must have faith, no matter how much you are a doubter. If you what is faith? Faith is conviction, persuasion, conviction persuasion that compels you to take action persuasion conviction our conviction about God is very weak because we have not had an encounter hallelujah are you getting what I'm saying come Pastor Femi hold this phone feel the phone around Go back to your seat. Do you believe there is a phone here? Are you trying to believe it? Are you trying to force? Are you trying to talk it? Talk it. Are you trying to? There is. A, you had an encounter with this phone, and you know. If I come to you now and use scientific formulas, and I say, "Do you know that that phone has gone?" You can die believing it. Is that true? Listen to me. Bible faith is a product of an encounter with God. Faith comes by hearing. You don't hear what you read. You don't hear what you read. It takes more than reading for it to become faith. You don't hear what you read. When you read, when you look, you see what you read. Is that true? But the Bible says faith comes by hearing. There is an activity that must happen. And that leads me to the second solution. Because until you embrace the second, you will never experience the first. The second solution, and I feel like crying as I say this. Get me. Number two, dishonor. That's, I'm, I'm trying to analyze what I think is a problem or what is the solution, the missing link. Dishonor or little regard for the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Is it possible to have the fan? Please, I'm sweating. Hallelujah. Dishonor and little regard, if at all any, thank you, for the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ. I don't know whether it was by 
demonic manipulation or whatever but we have come to a point where we have rejected the greatest gift that Jesus gave unto men the gift of this person of the Holy Spirit we talk so much about eternal life we talk so much about Zoe the life of God we talk about that invincible life that incorruptible life yet the average believer in the body of Christ knows nothing about the Holy Spirit a few Pentecostals just know that he is that agency that can make people to turn around and fall down or pray in tongues and that, that's the end of it yet Jesus spoke so much about the Spirit of God in fact, the Bible has this to say. He said, all scripture, is that true? All scripture were a derivative of what? The Holy Ghost moved upon holy men and they wrote as they were inspired. That means without the Holy Spirit, what we have come to know as the word of God or scriptures is not even there. Please, are you, are you understanding what I'm teaching today? We have truly disregarded the ministry of this personality called the Holy Spirit. And it bleeds my heart. It bleeds my heart. While I, I started studying this, when I got to this part, I started crying and sobbing. The power of God just filled my room and I was crying. And the Holy Spirit kept ministering to me that the church has rejected the fullness of my ministry. The church has re rejected the fullness of my ministry. And I started... You know, I, I, I was just singing and there was a song. I hope that we'll get to play. But that was a song that was all through in my heart. Dance with me, oh lover of my soul. To the song of all songs. Have you heard that song? The song of intimacy. I kept singing that song and I was just crying. I was saying, Holy Spirit, I respect and regard you more than anything at all. He's the number one lover of my life. And I kept singing that song. We have rejected his ministry, yet we want power. We have rejected his ministry, yet we want our prayers to work. We have rejected his ministry, yet we want prosperity. We want wisdom. Let me tell you, without the Holy Spirit, there can never be faith. Because the primary assignment of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus. Are you getting my point? When you get born again, his primary assignment, it is the Holy Ghost that brings the reality of Jesus. It's not some mental ascent or some imagination or hallucination. The Holy Ghost was vested with the responsibility of bringing and revealing the reality of Jesus. And then, when he brings that reality to you, he empowers you and he uses you to reveal the reality of Jesus to the world. What we lack in the body of Christ is a true encounter with Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit that furnishes a reality in us that is greater than our experiences a reality that is greater than our pain a reality that is greater than our our ideologies is someone following what i'm saying this is the reason listen let me tell you there is a law that works in this earth everybody moves in the direction of his greatest conviction are you getting my point everybody moves we take steps in the direction of our greatest conviction that means if i set fire in this place and i say everyone if you know you are born again and the life of christ is in you go and stand inside the fire everybody say wow the life of god so ways at work in me but the moment you finish that conviction everybody will follow the path of his true conviction is that true I couldn't sleep yesterday because I got so many text messages by people. So many. So many people were saying, should I do it? Man of God, I got an instruction. My parents woke me by 1 o'clock, by 2 o'clock. They said I should bath. Is it bath with salt or something? 
Don't laugh. Some of you did it. You are now laughing because we didn't see you. Some of you just went quickly. Just carry salt. And then you, you try to spiritualize it by saying, blood of Jesus. Shabbat. It's not true. It is still, you are following the path of your conviction. Hallelujah. See, let me tell you. In the face of reality, what you really believe is what you will act. Is that true? In the face, we can fake this thing in church and wear nice clothes and sit down and act all kinds of things. But in the face of reality, it is your true conviction that is revealed. In the face of reality, what you really believe what you really believe. In the last two weeks in Nigeria, herbalists have become millionaires because all kinds of people, church people, pastors, all kinds of people, now that we are aware that money cannot buy the cure for Ebola, many people are running. Is we can come to church and talk all kinds of nonsense. Many of us have remembered that we now have traditional rulers in our village. And many of many of the people who have not been relevant in Nigeria are now coming. They are saying, Shay, you have rejected us. You are intelligent. You went to school. You will now need us. And they are running back with all kinds of gifts. People are traveling to the village and saying, come home, come home. There is a solution. Listen. Listen, I want to tell you something. One of the things that I believe has corrupted our appreciation of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is what I call an exa exaggerated intellectualism that we have brought to Christianity. Please listen to me. There is too much emphasis on intellectualism. We have lost the glory. We have lost the supernatural in the church. See, a woman of God said something that touched me. She said, if this modern day church were the church standing at the Red Sea, the moment we were there, they would call elders first to go and negotiate with Egypt to say, oh yeah, hold on. Let's, we are envoys. We were sent by the church. While we bring preachers to start raising money to build a bridge. That's what we would have done. The modern day church will never imagine that that sea will part and will say, oh Lord, we'll put prayer warriors to pray. We'll put kingdom financiers. We'll put intelligent architects and engineers. Let the building of the bridge begin. And God will watch and say, what is this? We have lost the reality. Listen to me. I believe in education. Don't get me wrong. I believe in mental development. We talk a lot about capacity building. But we have lost the authenticity, the simplicity of the presence of God, the glory of God, the supernatural power of God has been lost in the church to an extent that anything we see that is above our intellect, we criticize and we doubt it. Yet, some of the people that do this are pastors. We want to find intellectual explanations for everything. We have lost the reality of the supernatural in the church. And it must be preserved. Because the supernatural in the church right now is an endangered species. There must be men and women who will protect it. Everything is analyzed in the church from an intellectual point of view. We have gone to school. We have degrees. And when a man comes on stage to speak, he says, I'm a professor. I read pneumatology. I read this. Please don't get me wrong. I honor education. I honor great men. I honor intellectuals i'm talking about an exaggeration bringing it out of its boundary i read advanced theology i spent 32 years studying this and that everybody says wow this guy's an intellectual believing that he can solve the problem and everybody takes it viral and when an ordinary brother just comes out from the wilderness who say just go what do you have to say brothers and sisters listen to me what is happening in the world right now is a demonstration of how little intellect can contribute to the well-being of people in the face of spiritual forces demons did not go to school but they can torment a professor are you getting what i'm saying there's too much emphasis on our intellect and if it is not intellectualism we don't receive it 
Show me how A and B will become C. There's so much intellectualism. We come on stage and we present speeches to people and they say, wow, that was such a nice speech. And the sick go back sick. The blind go back blind. The oppressed go back oppressed because we have lost the reality of the glory. He said, woe unto you, teachers and doctors of the law. You will not enter the kingdom and you will stop those who want to enter. Every time God wanted to do great things, he found ordinary men who would not resist the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We have ignored his ministry. We have ignored his ability to reveal the reality of Jesus. There are many people, if Jesus were to walk physically today, we will pass him and not know he's the one because the, the activity of the spirit is not even in, at work in us. If Jesus came to many of our assemblies today, we will drive him out. Is someone getting what I'm saying? I'm trying to let us know that there are idols that we have lifted and one of it is not just witchcraft. It is the overemphasis on intellectualism. Bible says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover but you try to lay hands on many people and they look and say what is all that please wisdom is profitable to direct so we like scriptures that are close to our intellect so that we can explain it but let me tell you there is a supernatural generation that is arising Ebola has proven to the world that it takes more than intellect to reign are you hearing what I'm saying? Right now, the whole world is, is standing still. We are depending on doctors and microbiologists. And you can imagine the pressure that is on our doctors and professors and microbiologists. They are sleeping and waking up in the lab. They are under all kinds of pressures. Hmm. It is at that point of darkness that the church can arise. Mandela Kaporos. Are you getting blessed? Ebola has proven that the Christianity in Africa and Nigeria is very weak. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We must admit it from we the men of God. Let's tell ourselves the truth. It is a disease that money cannot buy the solution. If it could buy it, there are people who have the drugs and then will claim who claim that is because we are men of God but right now it is your individual faith that can stand and protect you at that point the robber hits the road you carry your degree and place it upon Ebola and say in the name of Jesus leave Nigeria you carry your, your money withdraw, carry your ATM card and place it and say all the demons look at how fear is killing people one announcement spread like wildfire bath with salt and water every nobody even found out whether it was jesus that said it whether it was the devil we will find out on sunday meanwhile let me hurry up and do it it tells you that all this courage will have been bouncing in church in our hearts there is fear they said bath we laugh at the man for bathing seven times is that true now it's beginning to make sense there are many preachers that did it but on Sunday we'll now stand and say you go back. Many people took their bath. Trust me. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. No, 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 no. It's not condemnation. It's, this is just a discussion. We're saying that there is a reality. Brothers and sisters, I want you to imagine for one minute that if the government of Lagos State did not manage what happened and it spread like wildfire and came to the north what we that's when all our talk talk it would have it would have been put that's the mount camel experience everybody would now stand and we will be tried by fire to know men who are of the secret and men who are outside but let me tell you I do not tell you that many of these kinds of things will not come.
getting afraid is a waste of time rise up in the spirit and you will get to a point listen this was the same kind of disease that happened in the days of a man called john lake come on now generals indeed these were men that truly you could say men they didn't make so much noise but they were men with evidences john lake went to help the doctors when the foam in their mouth you know when many people heard the story they thought it was exaggeration now you know it's true that even if the foam touches your hand it can you can contact it and while the doctors were doing their best john lake went and was helping to bring out the dead people with his bare hands and after weeks nothing happened to him and the doctor said what is the secret and he said great is the mystery of godliness god can dwell in a man and this guy proved it scientifically he said let's go to the lab put the foam of the dead man on my hands and they took it he said check it let me show you that i represent a true god and he brought a harvest spokane was the healthiest city in the whole world see to be a healing technician in john jake's healing school you would need to heal seven people that's your admission letter seven people proven healing to be considered as one of the healing technicians what are we bragging for but can i tell you the bible says shall their own belief make the faith of god of none effect we can sit down as if god is powerless we can sing all kinds of songs i will never worship man made god you are above him keep singing i will never worship man made god blah 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 if we don't stop this this hypocrisy and settle down for authentic apostolic christianity we will be in for a shock in this country so in the north there's boko haram in the south there's ebola is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am this is what god is telling nigeria is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am yeah is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am listen brothers and sisters there is a supernatural dimension to life life is not just physical life is not just intellectual the holy ghost seeks to reveal a reality to us when god called me i told god i don't want to be fake i want to stand in for truth and i made up my mind that i would pay any price to make sure that i do not handle the word of christ deceitfully that when i tell people jesus can kill i will prove it if I tell people Jesus can bless, I will prove it. If I tell people Jesus can save, we will not gather people for miracle service and come and be lying and faking miracles. So, oh God, if the anointing is not on me, let's cancel it. This is how I pray. I have no business trying to build ministry, trying to build a repetition. Can we give the body of Christ? Can we give Nigeria? Can we give Africa something tangible that will enter history? Can the governments of nations call on the church and say Ebola is killing us? Where are the healing evangelists? The fact, look, let me tell you, in the days of God's generals, listen to me, Alexander Dowe was called the spiritual mayor of his city. The government consulted with him. If it were in the days of the apostles, by now, the government will be having a meeting with the men of God to say something is wrong. We hold crusades and pack it full and no man can come out and say, where is the God of Elijah? 
brothers and sisters i'm not saying this as one who has attained this is a cry for all of us to cry i'm saying that let's stop boasting there is still a lot to be done thank god for what we have done thank god for the wheelchairs but let, where is that audacious voice that will not stand not thank god for ah i wish men like benson idahosa were still alive these were the men Archbishop Benson Idahosa, if this man was still alive, he would have gone on NTA and said, according to the word of the Lord, that's a true prophet, not just names and phone numbers, standing and saying, I declare that this spirit that came from the sea called Ebola passed over Africa and he will go back and sleep. A man that went around the world 52 times, white men trembled at his presence. Because he took time to know God for real. Is the hand of the Lord too short that he cannot save? Is it that there are no voices? Many of us claim that we saw Jesus every day. There are men of God that say every Sunday I'm now seeing Jesus. We have not seen the effect. Men who saw Jesus in the Bible, even those who were close to them fell and it took them a long while i keep saying this thing and please don't get me wrong i'm not criticizing the body of christ i'm part of it i'm challenging the body of christ that we must stop lying to ourselves in the name of christ and rise up there is so much more because ebola is not a virus ebola is a spirit from the sea and it arises with rage they are called rulers of darkness they reign every time there is ignorance But there must be men of the secret place. Every time there is a manifestation of evil, God will send the man he has been training. When Jezebel, that witch, oppressed the prophets of God, the Bible says, and Elijah the Tishbite. Where are the Elijahs? We are building churches, building cathedrals, Thank God for helping the poor. I believe in charity, but it will not save the world. We need the demonstration of the reality. A reality that is greater than medicine. A reality that is greater than politics. And brothers and sisters, if God is calling you into ministry, don't be in a hurry to start printing banners. If you have printed it, fold it and keep it in your room because there is a lot of work to be done. Jesus power, Koinonia Cathedral. We, we implicate ourselves with dangerous names and people come hungry and we come and waste their time. With everything, with everything, we will With everything, with everything we will shout for your praise. Can we pray and know that our prayer can have a national impact? Can we speak and know that there is a force that backs our word that no government can resist? Can we bring the power of God to bear? A few of the victims that have contacted Ebola now are humanly speaking going to die. Yet there are many people who talk life-giving spirits in Nigeria and nobody can even send a handkerchief because the truth is this is a miracle that the reputation of any man of God that dares to try is at national stake. Behold, darkness shall cover the earth. Isaiah saw these days and he said it behold darkness will cover the earth things will challenge our convictions things will challenge our faith brothers and sisters let me tell you something hear me we must become men and women of the secret place everybody say the secret place we must embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Come hold my hands. The Bible says, and the Lord, listen, look at me. 
and the Lord walking with them walking with them confirming their words with signs following and the Lord walking with them and the Lord healing through them and the Lord delivering through them he said yeah do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death we have not entered there yet he said I shall fear no evil is that true is that true but are we not afraid of evil as darkness looms over the face of Africa governments have been having meetings for weeks because right now it's not an issue of money the God of money the God of gold has been brought to its knees and right now the world is crying can the church arise can the church speak honor to the ministry of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit has been crying across the face of Nigeria and we have ignored him because we want to build branches we have ignored him because we want to wear suits we, we have ignored him because we want crowd we have ignored him because we are contented with the little miracles and all the things hear me any man that disregards the ministry of the Holy Spirit is about to pay for it in the days that were coming this is not an option again ebola is only a shaking he said and i will shake the heavens and i will shake the earth i'm not saying it is god that has brought it but i'm telling you that there are seasons there are many spirits like ebola these are devils from the sea these are devils of the air the bible calls them the rulers of darkness and if the church does not present something real to the world can i tell you what will happen our churches will be full on sundays and every other herbal shrine will be filled during the week are you hearing what i'm saying when the going gets tough i guarantee you men will return to traditional christianity this one that you see people say fake man of god everybody will soon become fake if we don't take time because when things when people start dying i hope you know people don't want to die when people start dying i guarantee you they will start running to herbalists and it will not be hidden it will not be hidden and they will wait to slap the person who says why are you going to a herbalist so the church must arise i thought through these things it is faith brothers and sisters that move mountains never forget this we need an introduction of Bible faith. Our fathers caught something that was real. Unfortunately, for many of us now, in this church that we have now, the Church of Christ in Africa as a continent, and for the most part in Nigeria, our proof of faith is that money is in our account. That's largely our proof of faith. So if I have a big church, if I have a glass house, if I have a flashy jeep, I say faith brought it. If that faith brought it, that faith should raise the dead. That faith should heal the sick. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your glory. With everything, with everything we will shout let me tell you something there is an army that is rising please believe me i have been saying this thing for a long time there are men and women who are saying no to the things people have said yes to for a long time and they are staying they are paying the price and the Bible says, call on to me and I will answer. He said, I will show you. I will show you. If you call on to me and you mean business, not call on to me to use me. Not call on to me to use me to build a church. Not call on to me to use me and get a wife and get a husband and get money. Thank God for these things. Not call on to me to use me and get anointed. He said, if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. 
and when you find me in that secret place he said i will show you i will show you more than good talk i will show you more than rema i will show you the secrets of the spirit and on the strength of that encounter true faith will come listen they called in lystra they called paul and who now was it barnabas they called them zeus and hermes these were greek gods zeus and hermes this zeus was the god of the atmosphere they studied these gods they have their history hallelujah all of the gods zeus hermes apollos all of these gods they were gods of the air the greeks held these gods in high esteem and when men who had stayed in the secret place who were not looking for ministry or title or apostle or prophet they were men who hungered for the things of god the bible says when they showed up the men said the gods have come down to us they began to worship them they said paul was hermes because he was the god of communication he spoke he was the, the god of of intelligence they called men Zeus and Hermes. I hope you know that Greek philosophers were intelligent people. They were not daft. So for a man to look at a fellow man and say, no, this is not a man. This is a God. May our generation restore the order of true power. May our generation proof to creation that Jesus truly died may our generation prove oh God I pray that you raise men who are genuine raise men that love your presence more than ministry raise men that love your presence more than power raise men who are not they are not they are not concerned about titles raise men who are not concerned about church expansion and having the greatest name and having the greatest ships thank God for these things but raise men who are envoys indeed it has nothing to do with your kind of church listen there are many of you scattered in this crowd I don't want to say it's everybody but there are many of you this cry is already like a burden in your spirit because we are like a woman that is with child and traveling when she gets to the eighth month getting to the ninth month lots of unusual things begin to happen there are women here there are ladies seated here who will walk in the anointings of deborah you are seated ordinarily but you see people don't believe it they don't believe it because you don't look like it but you know that your hunger for god is not natural there is something when others sleep, you wake up in the night on your bed and you can't sleep again. You don't even, it's a cry of destiny. God is searching. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the spirit of God is hovering across Africa again and saying, will you reject me? Will you not embrace me? I strengthen John G. Lake. I strengthen Smith Wigglesworth. Catherine Kuhlman talked so much about him. We talked so much about, about Catherine Kuhlman. But we do not talk about the person that she talked so much about. Ketrin Kuman cried and said, I rather spend five minutes. I would not spend five minutes without the Holy Ghost. This is my passion. I have a hunger. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it's taking me to. This is the hunger that drives me. I have no ambition for ministry this is what drives me thank God for all of the blessings you meet on the way but there is a hunger I have seen in the visions of the Lord that a time will come I've seen this many times where like the shadows of Peter men will walk like gods in this country men will walk let me tell you the face of what you see as Christianity in Nigeria is changing yes it's changing there is an elijah generation that is arising but the problem is 
the level of attention we are giving God now will not equip us for the kind of grace and prophetic destiny that we have there is so much distraction we give God little time we give the Spirit of God little time yet we want so much make me powerful make me great make me this and that I desire you every time I'm alone I say Spirit of God if I never become anything in this life show me the glory of God reveal the reality of Jesus Christ to me I've been praying I've been fasting and I've been telling the Lord I want a visitation again from Jesus Christ thank God for the one I had but I need a fresh visitation there are questions I could not ask I want to ask them now there are questions many people are running away from I am tired of preachers preaching powerful messages without the grace to back up what they are saying the Bible says great grace was upon them not just grace in terms of talking it a demonstration of the spirit the apostle will be preaching and someone will fall and die and you tell the people no cause for alarm he will go out and raise the person and not put it on newspaper when will that happen brothers and sisters is there such a time that this will happen in the body of Christ that a man can walk to people and these are all people in the wheelchairs and he says I bring you the authority of a government he's not asking questions he's not trying to claim he's not saying do you have faith or not no the authority and he tells them this is a sign that Christ is alive this is more than all the series of messages we keep teaching that people believe and there is no faith is someone hearing what I'm saying we pray for hours thank God for the prayers but our prayers are not backed up with grace our prayers are not backed up by authentic faith let me tell you the truth if we have the faith to release on the kind of prayers we are praying we will change the face of this nation hallelujah God is calling us there is a cry of the spirit some of you started with God you started very well but little glory has distracted you and you have left this pursuit please sit down guys some of us started some of you are here inside and outside you started on a good note you had this hunger now you don't know what has happened boyfriend has come to carry the hunger girlfriend has come to carry the hunger you finally graduated and the hunger has come there are people in this place God is speaking to you and is telling you you are still part of the army you are still part of the army I am counting on you it may take a while there are some of you who have not even made up your mind for Jesus Christ but you are part of this army and God is calling you there is an urgency in the spirit and don't you say it does not concern you this has nothing to do with men of God this is salvaging the soul of Africa salvaging the soul of Nigeria before Christ comes Africa and indeed Nigeria will present to the world the true portrait of apostolic Christianity not just talk if we do not contend we are going to see more dead people in the next few years sicknesses will kill them because hell is boiling like a volcano and releasing the best of his arsenals and let me tell you something like the prophets under the custody of Obadiah we must stay we must stay we must pay the price many of us have all sorts of ambitions many of us have all sorts of things but there is one desire there is one ambition I live only to see his kingdom come that's my ambition that's my ambition that's my desire I foresee a time when the church will walk in levels of glory when the church will walk in the prophecy of Smith Wigglesworth before he died he called Andrew Murray Lester Sumro sorry and he began to prophesy to him he talked about our generation and he said he saw the church rising in glory rising in power brothers and sisters if we do not get into this dimension our children are at stake of dying from viruses that doctors cannot cure 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? If we do not rise, a time will come, our children will go to school and they will not come back again because a demonic spirit has eaten them up. But may God raise generals in the spirit. Men who can stand and say, Satan, before you pass through my family, come through me. The Bible says that you will take up poison and it will not hurt you. We are going to pray tonight. We are really going to take our time to pray. We are going to cry for an encounter. Listen, we need genuine encounters. It is only an encounter that will tell us which message is a lie and which message is true. Every message sounds nice, but an encounter will bring the separation. There are many sick bodies that are waiting for our encounter. There are many lives and destinies. I spoke with my parents this afternoon and I told them, relax. You are totally covered. Covered from Ebola, covered from everything. Because there is an envoy who is still interested in the things of God. Many of you want your parents to die like chickens because you know they are not born again. And in some of us in our families, you are the only ones who are serious with God. And rather than rising, the devil wants to destroy your family. So he's causing your fire to go cold. So that when he comes, there is no man that can stand. He said they are taken for a prey and none say it restore. They are taken for a prey and there is nobody who can stand. I'm ready to stand for my generation. It does not matter what it will cost me. I will preach, I will pray, I will teach, I will travel around and bring the reality of the glory of God. I may be criticized, the message may not be appealing, but I tell you the truth, this is what I was born for. And I will do this with all my life. I don't have multiple ambitions. There is one reason, one reason and one only. You must have a conviction that you can live and die for. Otherwise, you are wasting your time in the earth. Stop escorting men in destiny. God is calling someone tonight and is telling you, start asking these questions and start taking the things of God seriously. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, please. Oh, 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 oh,
ready? Help us, Holy Spirit. Are we ready? I want you tonight to fall in love with the Spirit afresh. I really, really want us to encounter the Spirit of God in a fresh dimension. A lot will happen in me. Within the next few minutes, find a generation that cry for you. And Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus, let our cry be genuine. Spirit of God, we permit your operation in this place. Just find men for the next 15 minutes. Let there be an awakening. Find men and women inside, outside. In the name of Jesus, tonight, I like you to drop anything that is not of God. Take God seriously, even if it is for the first time. We cry, we cry for your glory. Let it come with greater intensity. Let it come with fire. Let it come with fire. We're tired of religion. We're tired of church. We are tired of pretense. We owe our generation a debt that we must pay. To the sound of our song. Dance with me, oh lover of my soul. To the sound of our song. From the desire to build ministry we repent for giving the spirit of god little place we have exalted fame we have exalted money we have exalted education but we want your anointing we want your power we want your glory we want to give our generation something Pray. Tell the Holy Ghost, find the habitation in my life. Find a place. Find a place. Find a place in my ministry. Find a place in my life. Find a place in my home. Yeah. I pray the Holy Ghost is finding entrance into our lives wherever you are inside or outside
you back up on the low bar, 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 bar. She na 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 mas, she na 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 mas, she na 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 mas. Go ahead, Spirit of the Living God. Find men. Capture lovers in this place. Capture men. We call unto you. We call unto you. Answer us. We call unto you. We call unto you. Take my ambition, take my heart, take my life, take everything. that cry Lord we cry to know you we cry man of God there is more pastors there is more apostles there is more Use us, O oh God. Use us, O oh God. We dedicate our lives. We dedicate our all. Shapaka parada balaba, shata balaba. We lay down our pride. We lay down the walls. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, give me an encounter. Not just this night. Give me an encounter that will produce real faith in my life. I am tired of faking it. It's not supposed to be so hard. It's because there is no encounter. It's not supposed to be so hard to heal the sick. It's not so hard to live in hell. It's because there is no encounter. There's much prayer. 
but little faith that backs up the prayer much fasting but little faith that backs the fasting much confession but little faith that backs the confession hallelujah Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Use all of me. All of me, yeah. take all of me, all of me, yeah. use all of me, use all of me, take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. Please take all of me, all of me, Lord. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. Give my everything to you. Will you have my everything? I dedicate my everything. Use my everything. I lay my everything. Take my everything, sing. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Just the voices. Take all of me. All of me, Lord, you have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands, as many of you who can lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, our hands are lifted because we mean business with you. And I pray right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray like a man who finds the lover of his soul capture as many people even in this place make mighty men and women right now in the name of jesus 
right now in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands inside and outside. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Capture men. Capture men. Take them to a realm of intimacy beyond that which they have seen. I release the ministry of the Holy Ghost inside and outside. I release the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Take men to realms of visions. Take men to realms of dreams. I stir up prophetic fountains. Take men to deep realms. The spirit of man is like a deep water. Lord, I pray. Let the hidden things of the spirit let the hidden mysteries of the spirit let eyes be open let ears be open may man hear the sounds of heaven may man hear the sounds of angels may man hear the sounds i open you up to that heaven encounters many of you will begin to have visions visions of angels visions of jesus God heaven encounters that will produce faith visions of heaven visions of angels encounters of the spirit mantles of fire you will become messengers of fire messengers of power messengers of grace great grace grace great grace grace Great grace. secret place where I will be with you you can make me lie down wrap me in your arms 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 Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Would you take me to that place, Lord? To that secret place where I will be with you. You can make me lie down. Wrap me in your arms. that I seek you are my all in all seeking you as a precious jewel not to give I'll be a fool you are my all Just the voices, just the voices. Jesus, Lamb, worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Come and call his name. This is the one who will empower the church experientially worthy
I come against every sickness I come against every infirmity I come against demons I come against powers I come against thrones every spirit in this place that is not of Christ I command you to leave now I command you to leave now every sickness in this place everyone who is sick the hand of God comes upon you right now I cause every infirmity I cause every pain I cause every disease and every destiny that has been tied up I release you right now I release you right now I release every destiny that has been tied up I prophesy the opening of the gates to every destiny that has been closed I prophesy the opening of the gates to every ministry every business every life every career every destiny I prophesy the opening of the gates hallelujah in the next 10 minutes I like us to pray hallelujah James please we are going to pray for Nigeria and we are going to cast this devil far from our lives far from our families James Shila Prokasira Bondo Prokashira James 5 from verse 17 James 5 from verse 17 Please when it's time to pray I like us to pray The church is a powerful force James 5 Can it be projected? Verse 17 Okay, let's just read it. James 5. Don't worry. Verse 17. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that there might not be rain and it rained not in the earth not in his country not in his city in the whole earth by a space of three years and six months and then verse 18 and he prayed again and the heavens gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit we are going to pray and we are going to challenge two forces that plague our nations number one is the force of terrorism number two is this pestilence Ebola and the rest are you ready to pray the Bible says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous man the fervent heartfelt hallelujah if you can hold your hands together wonderful we are going to pray lift up your voice and say after me in the name of Jesus shout it say in the name of Jesus we come against every virus every spirit every demon that wants to plague our families that wants to plague Nigeria that wants to plague Africa we command you to get out of this continent out of this nation and out of our families we command your powers broken by the blood of jesus come on lift your voice and pray we cause ebola virus we cause every other virus we cause every virus we cause it from Liberia we cause it from Nigeria 
We cross it from the city of Lagos. Across the 36 states, we break the power of evil. We break the power of evil. We break the power. You are a spirit from the sea. We call you by day and we challenge you in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, the blood of the eternal covenant. We come with the rod of the higher priesthood and we challenge you in the mighty name of Jesus. We challenge you. We challenge you. We challenge the shrine. We challenge the covenant that empower your operations. We challenge the enchantment that invoked you out of the sea. We challenge the powers that strengthen your operations. We challenge every spell. We challenge every voice. We challenge every incantation that permits your operation across Africa, across Nigeria, across the states of this nation. We come with the rod of a higher priesthood. We come with the blood of Jesus. And we command you, we banish you, we banish you out of this nation. We banish you out of Africa. We banish you in the name of Jesus. We banish you. Come on, pray. Pray. When the church prays, we authorize heaven to invade our territory. We are ambassadors and we are responsible ambassadors. No way to a border. We cross you from the heavens. We cross you. The Lord rebuked you. We cross you by the power of the heavens. We cross you above the powers that release you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No spirit arises on its own. It is invoked by incantations. The Bible says that woman that invoked the spirit of Samuel, it was a demon that appeared like the spirit of Samuel. Spirits do not just arise and enter territories. They are invoked by spells and incantations we are going to pray one more time we challenge the powers that sponsor the release whatever prophetic code brought Ebola out of the sea we cause you back with the rod of the higher prison we cause those powers we cause those spells we cause this Every force of divination, every force of necromancy, star gazing, men who have connived with the heavens and the least spirit, we call the power from the second heaven. We call them, we call them, we call them from the astral realm. We call them by the power of the Holy Ghost. The blood of Jesus, stronger, greater, stronger, greater, stronger, greater than every force, greater than every sacrifice that permitted them. Hallelujah. 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 Are you ready to challenge the power of terrorism in our nation? Listen, let me tell you, no human being on his own can have the audacity to terrorize a people. There are spirits. We are not interested in the human beings, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? It takes sacrifices to invoke these spirits. We are going to pray. Our weapon of victory is the blood of Jesus. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are not praying stupid prayers. We are praying prayers that produce results. The blood of Jesus paid a higher price than any enchantment that activates the operation of terrorists. And we are going to pray. We are starting from our Jerusalem. We are saying no way to Zaria. No way. No crisis. No fight. No way. And we spread it across the nation. Lift your voice and pray. We cripple the hands of terrorism. We cripple the hands of bloodshed. We cripple the hands of wickedness. We break the bands of evil. We break the bands of evil. We challenge powers. We challenge thrones. We set altars on fire. We plead the blood. We plead the blood across Zambia, our Jerusalem. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. Jerusalem. We pray for your peace. We pray for your peace. We pray for the peace of Zambia. Our borders are secure. Our gates are protected. Pray for the nation. Pray for the nation. Pray for the nation. We pray for every land where they have been bloodshed. We pray for the church of Christ in every land where they have been Oh God, arise! Oh God, arise! Arise like a mighty warrior! Arise in vengeance! Arise in power! Arise in grace! Arise! Now strong and blessed and God. Show the nation that you are not a man. Show the nation that you are not an idol. Arise, so great one. Let from the breath of your nostrils flow as it were the Red Sea. These activities of terrorism wipe them out of our nation. May they be forgotten. Because the power that sponsored their operation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. And then we'll pray for ourselves and we're done. We are going to cause the spirit of fear. The Bible says, and to deliver them who through the fear of death, not death itself, the fear. Our families are afraid. Many people are running around. Ebola has even become more scary than terrorism. But we are going to pray. Listen, let me tell you something. Fear is to Satan what faith is to God. Every time the devil wants to strike, he releases the spirit of fear. When men fear and their hearts fail them, then evil will happen on him. Then. That's why he told Joshua, he said, be strong. When you stand before them, don't chicken out. There is a government that backs you. He said, be strong. Be strong and courageous. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to cause the spirit of fear across our media. Right? Because that's where we get all kinds of things. We are going to pray and secure our media, our newspapers, the social network, and everywhere we are going to pray and say, Lord, we banish fear. No, no channel in this nation will be a means of carrying fear. To terrorize people, lift your voice and pray. We cause fear. We cause fear across the airways. We cause fear. That spirit of fear. We banish it. We cause fear. Fear in our homes. Fear in our places of work. Fear in schools. Fear at the airport. We cause fear. The church refuses to fear. We refuse fear. 
of the blood I plead the blood upon myself and across the borders of my loved ones open your mouth and pray I plead the blood of Jesus I plead the blood of Jesus I plead the blood of Jesus the, 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 the seal of the blood is upon me the seal of the sacrifice that was paid. I have been brought in the blood. I will not be destroyed by sickness. My Lord was secure. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood. We plead the blood. Our ultimate hope of victory. We plead the Lord of Jesus, the life of God, and work across every tribe of my being, across every cell in my body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and say after me in the name of Jesus. I have the life of God in me. Therefore, no sickness, no virus, no demonic manifestation can find expression in my body. And by the ministry of intercession, I cover for my loved ones. I cover for my family. And I declare that the blood of Jesus stands as a standard, stands as a wall against every virus, against every plague, against every pestilence. Therefore, I refuse to fear. I am strong. I am courageous. I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear the fate of the Son of God is at work in me the seal of God's ultimate sacrifice is upon me I, I was bought with a price I wouldn't die cheaply I was bought with a price I wouldn't die cheaply come on give Jesus a shout give him a shout give him a shout hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me encourage everyone. Hallelujah. When you get home today or tomorrow, just prepare the communion as a symbol of the body and the bread of Christ. Hallelujah. Prepare it as a communion and declare that this is the ultimate cure for everything. Everything. You know how they give vaccination? That they give you vaccine and you take that communion and tell yourself I will go anywhere I need to go I will greet everybody I will shake hands and hug generously I will play my part and no devil no devil hallelujah father we thank you for the spirit of faith we thank you because your word worked. we give you all the praise 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's take the following announcements and then we'll be out of here. Please be seated. God bless you. Those of us who are coming here for the first time, if this is your first time worshiping with us, please, wherever you are, I'd like you to honorably find, find your way to the front. We love you. We want to bless you. We want to speak over your life. Celebrate them, Koinonia. God brought them wherever you are, inside or outside. Those coming for post-UME and then you're coming, our parents. Bless them, Koinonia. Come on, celebrate them. Celebrate the hand of God in our midst. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, we'll be very quick about this. Thank you so much. Please keep coming, no matter how far. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. God brought you by his spirit. And I want to appreciate and celebrate all those who invited these people. Can you celebrate them, Koinonia? Hallelujah. May good things never stop coming into your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. For those of you coming for the first time, thank you so much for making our time to come. We love you and we mean it from the depth of our hearts. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. A meeting organized by Eternity Network International. We're here every Friday building and basking in the spirit. Hallelujah. We have a prayer and a prophecy for you. And I assure you that when we speak over your life, you will return with results. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands, saints of God, and prophesy. Bless them. We bless you. We bless you in the name of Jesus. We bless you to prevail. We bless you to rise above limitations. Those of you who wrote post-UME, we give you admission here and now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we don't care what politics happens in the Senate. We are the parliament of heaven. We instruct it, we command it, we enforce it, we decree and establish it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for those of you who came here trusting God for one miracle or the other, we command that you will never go back the same. Whatever came here with you, you will leave it here and walk free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and strengthen your hand. May you love God again and again, more and more, in the name of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekato Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the Kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.